Hello, this is Tiffany of Clarity, Confidence, Courage, Women's Empowerment, and I'm coming to you today to talk about a subject matter that I think is very relevant right now as we are trying to still get through the coronavirus and the worldwide pandemic, and that is toxic positivity. This is a subject matter that came up a lot during the shutdown because so many people were getting depressed and still trying to put on the happy face and still trying to make it through. So I wanted to talk about what toxic, toxic positivity is and how you can possibly identify whether or not you are going through it or if you know someone that is dishing out that type of behavior. Before we deep dive in, make sure you share, like, and subscribe if you're new to the channel so that you can always stay in tune and abreast to all the information that I'm putting out. So let's talk about this concept of toxic positivity. The idea of toxic positivity is when we go to the extreme and we don't allow ourselves to feel our emotions. So for example, if you were going through the pandemic last year, so much happened. I mean, between the pandemic, social unrest, social injustices, it was really a struggle last year for a lot of people, including myself, to maintain this positive attitude. And I told a lot of my clients that came to me during that time, you can feel your feelings. You don't have to be happy and smiling all the time. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel afraid as long as you don't stay there. The biggest thing with toxic positivity though, it's this idea that you have to be happy and smiles and high vibe all the time. It does not validate your feelings of sadness. It does not validate your feelings of fear or nervousness or anxiety or depression. It just says, get over it, move on. There have been many times where I have met people that were well-intentioned, but instead of really allowing me to express my opinions or my viewpoints or how I felt, whatever that emotion was, the anger, the sadness, the rage, they just said, well, just be thankful. Just be thankful it's not as bad as it was or just be thankful you don't live in this country, or just be thankful that you as a woman have rights now. You know, and it's like, well, okay, I'm thankful, and there's nothing wrong with giving gratitude. I give that every day, but I have a right to be angry, or I have a right to be sad, or I have a right to be depressed, or I have a right to cry. You have a right to also express your emotions if it deems possible. So this idea of toxic positivity isn't saying that you should just give up being positive, but it's also saying that you shouldn't just be positive when you're not really feeling that way. I also like to call this artificial joy. Sometimes we put on that happy face and that happy smile, but deep down we're miserable or we're telling people life is great. You know, we have everything we want, but inside ourselves, inside our homes, it's chaos and it's confusion or there's deep sadness. So what I tell a lot of times my clients is, instead of feeling like you have to be positive all the time, if anything, go deeper within and feel the, the emotions that you want to feel. Feel the emotions that are right there on the surface, whether that's jealousy, envy, sadness, whether you feel you know, like you're being deprived of something, whether you feel like you're just not getting what you want, feel those emotions because you have a right to be there and you have a right to sit in that motion for a period of time. I think the biggest issue with toxic positivity is that it does not validate the fact that there will be times in your life where you don't feel good. And during those times, you shouldn't be ashamed. You, wouldn't, you shouldn't feel guilty for not feeling good. You shouldn't feel like you're abandoning your tribe because they're all positive and you're not feeling it right now. Those are the things that keep you held back from expressing real emotion. And part of being a human being and going through the human experience is to be able to be real, is to be able to be raw, is to be able to engage with other people who may be going through the same thing and be able to connect on a very real and honest level. So I wanted to do this video because I know that when you are in a place where you feel like you have to be constantly positive and show the, the world some image that isn't real, you can limit your growth. It's hard to expand and be a person that's growing and learning and developing when you're allowing yourself to be stuck in a funnel and you're not allowing yourself to be real. The other thing that you do when you're displaying toxic positivity is that you don't allow others around you to be themselves. It makes people feel like, okay, she's constantly 
throwing this idea of being positive at me all the time. So I have to pretend and be fake. I can't just be myself around this person. So that's the other issue when it comes to toxic positivity. If you're displaying it, it doesn't give other people permission to be who they are. The other issue with toxic positivity is that you avoid real life. You know, the biggest thing that I see on Instagram and a lot of social media, well, not just Instagram, but other social media as well, is this display of this perfect, amazing life. And I cannot tell you how many people I've talked to that are in the business world who are very, very popular on social media who are like, oh my gosh, this is not real. This is a facade. You get a snapshot of one person's life one day that they decided to show you where they're living on the beach or they're with their perfect mate or they've got all the money or they're driving the Lamborghini. But that doesn't give you the overview of their entire life. It doesn't show you all the challenges that they may have. It shows you one glimpse of their life. So you start to get this idea though that they're happy and they're positive all the time. But in reality, that is not true. So when you display, when you buy into the facade of toxic positivity, you start to feel guilty because you feel like, well, why isn't my life perfect? What's wrong with me? So that's the other issue with toxic positivity. You start to play into that belief system and in that world that everything is perfect and you start to want to avoid real life because in your mind, you should be happy and positive and high vibe all the time. So I just wanted to do this video to talk about this concept of toxic positivity, how you may be able to identify if you're playing into po toxic positivity, if you're around people that are displaying toxic positivity, or if you just need to start being more real and start showing your emotions at least to yourself and feeling your feelings. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're in a space where you're like, Timmy, I think I'm suffering from toxic positivity. I think I'm trying to be super positive and meditate all the time and do my yoga and drink all my green juice, but I'm really feeling empty and I'm really not being honest with myself about where I am right now emotionally. If you're in that space, then definitely click on the link below get on my calendar for a free coaching strategy session where we talk about where you are, where you want to be, and how you want to get there. So again, I believe in positivity. I love being positive. However, there's a time and a space for positivity, and then there's a time and a space for feeling your feelings no matter what they are, being very real and authentic, and really allowing yourself to go deep inside of yourself and get really honest with where you are and how you feel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely leave me some comments below and definitely like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.